keep it pushing because this next fight was, was just an absolute amazing fight as well. Well, we'll get to it. We got Davison Figueredo, the flyweight champion, minus 210 favorite, fighting Brandon Moreno for the second time, plus 165 underdog for Moreno, number one ranked flyweight contender. Um, and let me, I'll use this as a spoon. <laughs> I felt Me too. so Me good too. about Figueroa coming to this one. I thought I thought the first fight was Fluke City. I thought it was one guy's best day and another guy's worst day, which happens sometimes in sports. Um, so you say you thought it was such a such an amazing fight, which yeah, the first man. one was first one was a more amazing fight overall, but as far as performance. This was a more amazing singular performance. Yeah, man. Because, I mean, is it fair to say that Brandon Moreno dominated this fight in every single position in start, every way possible? Start to finish. The the first four minutes of the fight was 40 strikes thrown by Moreno to six thrown by Figueroa. Yeah, Figueroa yeah. couldn't figure out his movement pattern, his, his, his feints, and his boxing. And, and, and that like, was the only thing I ever thought Figueroa had the advantage in. And, and throughout, after round one, I gave round one to Moreno clearly, especially because he fucking dropped Figueroa in the first round. The guy Clean. that supposedly has no power and is not dangerous. My own words, essentially, like, like I'm not, don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to push the blame here. I'm that he's a volume pressure fighter. A volume, a cardio fighter, an old school flyweight, unexciting, non dangerous flyweight McGee. I mean, I've said all these things. I was confident as fuck on Figueroa coming into this. So I'm not I'm not pushing the buck here. That's the difference between me and other MMA podcasters out there. I fully own whenever I'm wrong. Other people make excuses or say, hey, we all get something wrong. No. I'm, I'm going to celebrate my wins, but I eat my shit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong as fuck on this. I think Moreno learned a lot from their first fight about himself. More so even than about Figueredo. When did you hear um, Figueredo was in a six-month training camp? Like, and, and I mean, like, full-out training camp. The second he got home from the it's last too much. fight. It's too much. Why? Because the last fight was a draw. But and correct me if I'm wrong. It was only a draw because the – Two judges fight. Two judges scored it a draw. One judge scored it Figueredo. But, yes, the only reason two judges had it a draw was because the eye poke lost him a point. So realistically, he would have won by two rounds on one card and by one round on two cards. Yeah, and that's Figueroa, correct? Right. Yes, yes. So, so there, I mean, everybody had every reason to in the world to assume that Figueroa was going to look great here. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, I, I, if you can't get it, I mean, Moreno was just dominant bell to bell. In round one, he he actually dropped him and, and quadrupled his volume. Um. And round two, he showed off the wrestling. He he had top ground control, ground and pound, was essentially winning every single scramble. Yeah, was maintaining position, even though Figueredo was gr honestly great defensively with his like techniques. Yeah. Like Moreno was just equally good on top. Yeah, and I want that to be said as well. Figure actually, tell me if you agree with this statement. How would you true or false? Figueredo looked like shit last night. Uh, I'm going false. Uh, I'm going to go false. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say. No, I don't no, know. No, no, yeah, that wasn't my point. My point was that like, my point was. I, that I think Figueroa looked, looked. He looked fine. I don't, now I don't know if Figueroa looked like his best self, but I don't think he looked like his worst self. And I think a lot of the reasons we the, or the reasons he was like looking like that was because of what Moreno was doing, and not because of how Figueroa was feeling. Okay, that's important. Next question. Um, what percentage of the, I guess this is straight up skip and chin, undisputed style of question. Um, what percentage of the blame do you attribute to the weight cut of Moraine, uh, 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 Figueroa? Actually zero. Reason being this. I know. I know you're looking at me crazy. Here's why. The last time they fought, he made that weight in three weeks. From his previous I, fight. I still think the weight cut's a major issue for Figueroa, which will I, No, it's an that. issue. It's an issue for him in every fight that he has. In every fight. But, but do I think it was a particular issue fight. in this fight? No, but I'm saying that he fought him this to a draw, but what we thought he probably won the first time on a three-week weight cut, back down to 125. 
Whereas this time he had six months and he said by his own admission, he was in a, a training camp for six months. So it's not like weight management should have been a problem then. No, no. Moreno was in the training camp for six oh, months. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but I feel you, I feel you. I, I'm not trying to make an excuse. But either way, I, I just I'll think get that... into my big takeaway has a lot to do with the weight cut. I really does. Um, now, I thought Moreno fought the perfect fight. I thought he did everything right. He's the first ever Mexican U.S. Mexican born UFC champ. Champ, huge fucking deal. If you haven't fucking figured it out, Mexican people love buying fights. And love they love fights. Fighters. Yeah, yeah. Modelo is no. one of the biggest sponsors in the whole UFC. Oh, Canelo Alvarez. I mean, when I mean, when there's a Mexican champ, there's a Mexican fucking champ. I mean, it's a big fucking deal. You thought a Brazilian champ is a big deal. I mean, you think the Nigerian champ is a big deal. No, when there's a Mexican champ, I mean, especially, I mean, the fight was in Arizona, it borders Mexico. I mean, eh, oh, I mean, we share a border with Mexico. Bro, I mean, the fan, did, did you hear when Moreno walked out? Like, the the crowd was raucous for that man. I mean, I live, I live in San Jose. I mean, my, the name of my, I mean, it's, I mean, me, the huge Mexican market. Big Mexican champ is a big fucking deal. I mean, Figueroa was an all class in defeat. I actually loved him. Super classy. Him Super classy. I was uh, like, God I, damn. Know, push at the weigh-ins and all that, you know. Yeah. Um, it was a nice moment. I mean, Brandon Moreno kissing his baby daughter during the Joe Rogan interview, one of my favorite and probably belt-winning moments I've laid eyes on. It was gorgeous. You could tell Joe loved it, too. Yeah, old, old, old testosterone Joe's about to cry <laughs> again for sure. Uh, but, but uh yeah, we, and Moreno got the performance of the night bonus, which I said, how do you not give it to him? Like I said, you can read right. out about the, the – I guess we didn't even officially cover it. Officially submits Figueredo with uh, a choke, correct? Rear, rear naked? naked? Yep, rear naked. But it was it was the accumulation effect, you know. It wasn't just that rear naked. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, Kenneth's yeah, right, oh, yeah. like – Talking about having love for your for your opponent when you have a loss like that is like it just shows like the class of the person you are. So yeah, oh hundred percent. And man, all right. So my takeaway out of this is Brandon Moreno, man. All right, all right, all right. I guess I'll ask you this question: Do you want to see the trilogy? Yeah, you do. See, I'm honestly cool on not seeing the trilogy, even though like I'm cool with. The I think it's owed to Figueroa because he gave Moreno the shot after. Okay. Majority draw with one judge already saying he won off the technicality. My takeaway from this, I want to see Figueroa at thirty-five. Yeah, Hot take spicy take. I don't. No, know. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Like, I think there's given, room for it. Given the choice of the the trilogy or seeing Figueroa at thirty-five, I'm put. I, I I vote. Kenneth votes trilogy. I understand the conventional logic. I. I personally, you said 0% to weight cut. I'm going like 35, 40% to weight cut here. Like, uh, but, but. So, I, I, well, then that means in a trilogy, if he actually managed the weight cut, then you think he could win the fight without near as much of a problem? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, I just, I, I really, really think we're not seeing the best figurino. Oh, I see. Okay, you're saying and, that and, at all and, times is lessening his ability. Yeah, not this cut, just in general. The cut. Yeah, all cut. Yeah. And I think this cut was accumulation of past cuts. Every fighter tells you that it gets harder every time, and you lose a part of yourself every time. That's I've heard, I've watched enough podcasts. That's every facts. ex fighter says that. Uh, that's how I feel and now. And like I said, do I think like like I mean, uh, fucking weak example, but I mean, do I think Figueroa fuck Sean O'Malley up? Yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, Figueroa Aljamain Sterling. I'm Alien Figueroa. That'd be a fun fight. That'd be a fun fight. I mean, no, I mean Marlon Figueredo, Marlon Marais think, Marlon Marais Figueroa or Figueroa Aldo. I mean, oh. now, do I think Figueroa struggles with like a, like I think San Hagen's a nightmare matchup for Figueroa? Yes, as far as yes, yes, yes. But, I think the but, top but, three or four guys could be nightmares, except yeah, for Aljo. I, like I, I think Yon know. gives him a shit ton of trouble. I think San Hagen gives him a shit ton of trouble. I don't because I think I, I feel Yon's wrestling might give him trouble. Well, and but, his but head Jan's movement and overall boxing. boxing. Yeah, but I think it, it, I think Yon's a better boxer. He's a better boxer, but does like if, is he trying to sit there and trade shots with Figueroa in a boxing fight? But he won't. But he won't trade. He'll dodge oh, he'll and dodge, dodge and counter. He's a defensive boxing. 
Yeah. I feel it. I feel it. I think I think Figueroa's power would translate to thirty five though. I guess is my my larger point. I hundred percent agree with that. That's why I'm saying like Marais, a guy that's based on all power. Put them together. Let's we'll see what they can do. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I, I, I Garbrandt pushing to the main event. I definitely want to give time to the main event, but uh, but yeah, I want to see Figueroa at thirty five. Yeah, Garbrandt Figueroa at thirty five would be right. a dope fight. I was super against it. A sunset. The sunset. Another one. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I want to see Figueroa at thirty five. And that some tells me I may be right, or the trilogy. Or the trilogy. It's one of those two, for sure. One of those two, for sure, man. And I...